What's going on guys, Medicine in 3 Minutes back here with another video and today we're going to be talking about uh, Wardening Hoffman Syndrome or SMA. So let's get straight to the point, we're going to keep the subject clear, brief and illustrated, so let's get started. And just before we go uh, more into depth about the video, I just want to remind you guys make sure uh, to use all the illustrations, all the acronyms, anything we have in the video to help you memorize. Uh, make sure to use that to associate it with whatever you're memorizing because uh, again our main goal is to help you guys memorize as efficiently as possible so definitely check out all the little illustrations that we have in the video and associate them with whatever you're memorizing it really really helps so yeah uh spinal muscular atrophy again sma uh, it's a rare neuromuscular disorder characterized by a loss of motor neurons and progressive muscle wasting this often leads to a premature death and it's transmitted by a hereditary uh, autosomal recessive mechanism. And it's important to note that it is the most common genetic cause of infant death out of, uh, in the world. So this disease is caused by a genetic alteration of the SM1 gene, uh, which is called for SM, which is also SMN. Um, it's a protein necessary for the functioning of the motor neurons. Now, since there are low levels of the protein, again, by the alteration, uh, this causes abnormalities in the functionings of the neurons at the anterior horns of the spinal cord. And they can also cause uh, atrophy of skeletal muscles. Now, uh, the spinal muscular atrophy can cause progressive loss of muscle mass and gait disorder. And the proximal muscles are first to be affected out of everything. Now, it is autosomal recessive, as you can see. Uh, it is transmitted by both genders. It is often, uh, like, it skips generations. So basically, if your great grandmother were to have it, there is a possibility that your father wouldn't have it, your mother or your grandfather wouldn't have it, your father wouldn't have it, but you could end up having it, right? As it would skip generations. Uh, there are male and female carriers, and if both parents are carriers, uh, so there's going to be 25% chance uh, that you will be affected. Uh, there's 25% chance that neither the affected or the carrier will be affected. And there's a 50% chance that the carrier is completely unaffected and it does not uh, affect them in any way whatsoever. Now, there are two different types of spinal muscular atrophies. Now, the first is SMA1, like we talked about before. So this is um, acute infantile. So before the uh, six months of age, um, the child is unable to sit independently and there's a very, very poor chance of survival. Now, uh, there's another case called SMA2. So this is chronic infantile. So before it's acute and it's chronic, uh, it's before 18 months of age. The child, uh, they can sit independently, uh, contrasting to SMA1, but they, they, there's no independent ambulation, meaning, uh, they can't move on their own. They can't do any basic, uh, mo any basic motions on their own. Now, uh, there is an over 50% chance of surviving to mid twenties, but again, uh, there, there, you will. There is a higher chance of death near the age of 20 if you have passed that 50% chance. Uh, some physical traits you can find in it um, is the child will really lay in a frog like position. So I just like to think of a frog and then try to associate it with how the baby's looking and then just remind myself of that. So yeah, it's in a frog like position. And uh, another physical trait that you can find is that the baby is in a state of hypotony. So as you can see here, the baby is just completely entirely, all his muscles are relaxed, no sign of movement. But again, the baby is conscious and the baby is alive, but there is really no sign of movement. He's just completely relaxed. Now, another physical attribute that you can find is a fasciculation of the tongue. So basically, this simply means that the tongue is gonna start uh, fluttering and vib uh, shaking uh, violently to a certain extent. And that's basically gonna be one of the common uh, physical attributes. Um, there's going to be an absence of the deep tendon reflex of so the an anterior horn here is affected, not the posterior, the anterior one is. And basically, uh, you know, the old school top of the knee reflex that you'd have, you wouldn't be able to have it. Okay. So just a little review of everything we just looked at. So difficulty feeding, frog-like position, uh, fasciculation of the tongue, hypotonium, uh, absence of the deep tendon reflex, like we just talked about. Uh, are also more recessive and there's a defect in the SM1 gene. So just before we wrap things up, I just want to talk to you guys about this really great book. It's called Butcher Gardens and Eden of the Pacific. Uh, I have talked about it in a lot of my other videos, 
but yeah, I definitely just want to uh, let you guys know to check it out. Uh, it's on Amazon, Kobo, Kindle. It has some really great poetry. Uh, it has some beautiful, beautiful uh, photography of the Butcher Gardens in uh, Victoria, BC. So definitely go check out uh, that book. It's a really great book. And yeah, that about sums up this episode of Medicine in 3 Minutes. Make sure to leave a like button, subscribe if you're new. Uh, make sure to leave your feedback if there's anything we did wrong, if there's anything we didn't clarify, if there's any suggestions you have for a video. We love you guys' feedback. Uh, we, you know, we strive on you guys' support. So definitely uh, leave some comments down below. Let us know what we can work on. And thank you guys so much. Have a great day.